Welcome to Thursday's edition of Renew. I'm Pastor Tony Cowan. Thanks for joining us and let's get right to the point today. We are talking about knowing God personally and having a personal and intimate walk with Him. And again, that's not just knowing about God, knowing facts and figures, surface things about Him. That's actually knowing Him, knowing what's on the inside of Him, knowing what motivates Him, know, knowing what, how He views the world, how He views things and values things, His likes and dislikes. All those things are involved in knowing who God is. And we can know who God is. Now, if you've been joining us for the last few weeks on this podcast, actually that is exactly what we've been doing is revealing who God is. We talked about God is love and we talked about God is good. That's the core of his being, that's who he is. We talked about the fact that God is gracious. He's full of compassion, he's merciful. He has loving kindness towards us. All those things are reflecting and show us who God really is. In fact, I want to go back over to 1 John chapter 4. We looked at this a number of weeks ago and we talked about this is love, the God kind of love that he has for us. But I want to go back to 1 John chapter 4 and read a few verses of scripture here because this is really at the core of who God is, at his very heart and his very nature. Now verse number 7, it reads, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Now notice that right there. Notice that we know God when we are experiencing his love and that we're giving love to other people. In other words, when we're receiving God's love for us and then loving other people with that same kind of love that he has for us, then we come to know God. Knowing God means that we know love. Now, verse number eight says, he who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Now again, notice right there that it says God is love. Now, we could say many things about God, that God is the creator, he is. That God is the righteous judge, he is. That God is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the originator, he's gonna be the one that finishes all this thing up, and he is. He is all those things, but what he wants to know, want, the way he wants to reveal himself to us as his own children, his sons and daughters in the new covenant and this new life that we live in is the fact that he is love. Now, as we pointed out in that podcast a number of weeks ago, this is not just soap opera love, the world's kind of love, scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. This love is unconditional, it's aggressive, is irrevocable, is unchangeable. That's the kind of love that God has for us. He demonstrated his own love for us that while we were still sinners and enemies and ungodly, non-deserving of his love and affection, God loved us enough, more than enough, to give us his only begotten son, the most valuable thing he had to die on the cross for us. And see, that is, that is really who God is. If you really want to know God, you have to know this kind of love that we're talking about. And then in verse nine, it says, in this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. In this is love. We can say in this is God because God is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and he sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. So notice right there that this is really a revelation of who God is right here. If, you're, if we want to know God, we have to know love. We have to know this unconditional type of love because this is what motivates God. This is why he created us to begin with because of his great love. This is why he sent his only begotten son to die on the cross for us is because of his great love. See, all these are reflected in and who God is, who is love. You know, yesterday we talked about that Jesus is the word of God personified. He is the word of God made flesh. And in actuality, we could also say this, that Jesus is love personified because that's God. That Jesus is the love of God made flesh. See, that's the reason that he healed the masses. It's not so he could show off. It was because of he, he was moved with compassion is because he loved mankind. That's why he was there to begin with. 
That's why he healed people. That's why he delivered people, set people free. That's why he blessed people and provided for their needs and multiplied the loaves and the fishes and did all the miracles that he did is because of love. It, he is love manifested, personified in the flesh. And that, when we see Jesus, when we see Jesus, we see love manifested. When we see love manifested, we see really a revelation of who God is. In Ephesians chapter 3, we looked at that again a number of weeks ago. This is a prayer that Paul prayed in verses 14 through 21, I believe it is. Prayer that we ought to pray for ourselves, first person there. And it's not a prayer that God, please love the people more. No, it was God reveal your love to open their eyes, help them understand what the revelation of that love is. And, it, and in fact, it says in verse 18 and 19 that we may be able to comprehend and understand what is with all the saints, what is the width and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ. Why? Because that's knowing God. That's understanding God. And then it goes on to say, which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So notice right there, as we have a revelation of love, we have a revelation of God, and then we are able to walk and be filled and walk in the fullness of God in our life, and that is life. Life is knowing God. That's all the time I've got for today. Join us again tomorrow. If you like additional resources and materials, go to TonyCowan.org. We'll see you tomorrow.